All right, so now we're diving into the Nat Geo article, all right? All right, so you have a link to it. It's a really, really nice article. I highly recommend reading it or at least following along right now as we dive into it. And just kind of looking at the, the tag here right up below the title, alcohol isn't just a mind-altering drink. It's been a prime mover of human culture from the beginning, fueling the development of arts, language, and religion. Okay, so again, kind of like trying to wrap our head around or at least consider the fact that, that alcohol has been present for millennia, especially as it relates to human culture. Okay. So the way that this article starts is... Um, is is showcasing a beer maker in Germany, Martin Zarden Kau, okay? uh, and he's talking about yeasts. Like that's kind of the first thing that he's really getting into here, and brewing beer, and essentially like what can be done with various beers. Okay, uh, Zarnko started. Uh, Zarnko tells me that his plan today is to try to recreate uh, a beer from a four thousand year old recipe. So again. Like really dive in and deep. Um, Zarko started his career as a brewer's apprentice. is also an eminent beer historian. He's a big man, yada, yada, yada. The former abbey next door, for example, um, Zarko's building shares a hilltop overlooking Munich's airport with the Weinenstaufen, I feel like I got it that time, Weinenstaufen Brewery, which was founded by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD and is the oldest continually functioning brewery in the world, right? So again, the idea that, that beer's old and, you know, one of the, the oldest continually functioning brewery, maybe more interestingly, is at a monastery, right? Saint, uh, Benedictine, right? Benedictine monks, like that, that, that is a, a brand of religion, right? That is not, it's not a brand of religion rather. But monks being practitioners of the Christian faith in a particular kind of way, as it references uh, Benedictine, right? Um, and kind of like going into a little bit more of the history here. Uh, and I'm a Z uh, Zark Zarnkow. Uh, he and others have shown that alcohol is one of the most universally produced and enjoyed substances in history and in prehistory because people were imbibing alcohol long before they even invented writing. Okay? Zarnkow's Sumerian beer is very far from the oldest. Chemical analysis recently showed the Chinese China, that the Chinese were making a kind of wine from rice and honey and fruit 9,000 years ago. So I kind of mentioned that in my previous video. In the Caucasus Mountains of modern-day Georgia and the Zargos Mountains of Iran, grapes were one of the Grapes were one of the earliest fruits to be domesticated, and wine was made as early as seventy, as early as seven thousand four hundred years ago. Okay. All right. Let me make sure I'm clear. Yeah. All right. So I'm still just kind of running through. The, I'm not. I mean, not just running through this for the first time ever, but I'm still just kind of like finding tidbits here that, that I think are worthy of our conversation. But please do. Make sure to look, you know, through this article because some of the pictures, as Nat Geo is prone to do, um, you know, has some really moving pictures here. Okay, um, yeah, like this picture of the Peruvian, um, you know, drinking uh, fru frutiada, the corn beer flavored with strawberries. Sounds interesting. Okay. And then, you know, down there we have uh, alcohol lowers inhibitions that can be, they can make people feel closer to their friends and to the spiritual world. We kind of talked about that last week, right? And even like the definition of spirit. And if we're able to connect, you know, the idea of like spirits, vodka, gin, whiskey, tequila, being, um, you know, connected to this idea of like a spirit world or like something immaterial within ourself that is drawn out. Alcohol lowers inhibitions that can make people feel closer to their friends and to the spiritual world, right? Um, again, some more pictures and this picture in there, right? All right. All over the world, in fact, evidence for alcohol production from all kinds of crops is showing up, dating to the near dawn of civilization. 
The University of Pennsylvania biomecular, biomecular archaeologist Patrick McGovern believes that's not an accident. From the rituals of the Stone Age on, he argues the mind-altering properties of booze have fired our creativity and fostered our development of language and arts and religion. Look closely at the great transition in human history from the origin of farming to the origin of writing, and you'll find a possible link to alcohol. There's good evidence from all over the world that alcoholic beverages are important to human culture. 30 years ago, that fact wasn't as recognized as, as it is now. Drinking is such an integral part of our humanity, according to Govern, the only, that he only half-jokingly suggests that our species should be called homo imbibens. When you imbibe, means you're drinking. Okay? All right. So now I want to get to um, this next part of the article that's um, emboldened there that says, we, came, we come down from the trees for booze. And I'm going to focus more on this in the discussions and the lectures uh, in Thursday. But again, just to kind of like prime us to get us like ready for that, something worth considering. The story of humanity's love affair with alcohol goes back to a time before farming, to a time before humans, in fact. Our taste for the tipple, for tipple, so a beer, a brew, may be hardwired evolutionary, may be a hardwired evolutionary trait that distinguishes us from most other mammals, animals. The active ingredient common to all alcoholic beverage is made by yeasts, right? We've talked about this last week. Microscopic single-celled organisms that eat sugar to excrete carbon dioxide and ethanol, ethanol being the main component of alcohol, okay? The only potable alcohol. That's a form of fermentation. Most modern, modern makers of beer and wine and sake use cultivated varietals of a single genus called Saccharomyces cerevisia, right? And again, um, made that connection last week, cerevisia, cerveza, beer, all those connections coming about. So like when you say, hand me a cerveza, or you hear it, um, if you're in a Spanish-speaking country, right, obviously referencing beer, but paying more close attention to the fact that beer in, is coming from yeast, right? It's coming from, from, from a natural, you know, product of the earth, which is yeast, okay? But yeasts are diverse and ubiquitous, and they've likely been fermenting ripe wild fruit for about 120 million years, ever since the first fruits appeared on Earth. So again, like really kind of just like putting this into kind of some crazy, crazy thoughts. And putting this into some crazy context of just unfathomable amounts of time, 120 million years, right? So fermenting fruit, again, predating humans, predating even our, our ancestors, right? So the process of fermentation has been happening evolutionarily for millennia, right? For millions of years. But it's only as evolution has continued and kind of as species continually gravitate to fruits, does that again kind of like link up with humans, okay? Yada, yada, yada. Um, to our fruit-eating primate ancestors swinging through the trees, the ethanol and rotting fruit would have, been, would, have had, would have had three appealing characteristics. First, it has a strong, distinctive smell that makes the fruit easy to locate. Second, it's easier to digest. And third, the antiseptic qualities repel micro, microbes that might stick in a primate. Millions of years ago, one of them developed a taste for fruit that had fallen from the tree. Our ape ancestors started eating fermented fruits on the forest floor, and that made all the difference. We're pre-adapted to consume alcohol, possibly, right? So we're, we're pre-adapted for consuming alcohol. So like, what do you all think here, right? I mean, is this plausible? Just kind of like our general idea of what we think about, you know, um, yeah, what we think about and what we know about evolution, like are we, you know, very kind of convinced by this? And sometimes this hypothesis is known as the drunken monkey, okay? Again, monkeys coming down, eating, ripening, fermenting fruit on the forest floor. 
therefore kind of evolutionarily being, again, um, potentially pre-adapted for consuming alcohol, right? And then this next section here, and I'm, yeah, I mean, I am really curious to what you all think, right? Because there is some pretty interesting ways of thinking about this. And we'll dive more deeply into like this kind of drunken monkey hypothesis on Thursday. And then uh, in this Nat Geo article, we also have, um, we settled down and farm for booze. Okay, so like this idea that, that, you know, often we think about, you know, settling down and the birth of agriculture being um, related to the development for food and for crop and for um, sustenance, right? Well, there are some, again, hypotheses that are espoused in this Nat Geo article that suggest that maybe it wasn't necessarily for bread, but rather like some of these plantings of grains and wheat and other um other grains, sorry for the lack of repetition there, uh, was done so not again because of bread, but also, but also, but not done because of bread, but for the development of, of brewing beer. It also makes the claim in the article that beer was often more safe to drink than water, and alcohol was more safe to drink than water historically in some contexts. So potentially, right, uh, instead of drinking contaminated water, you drink some fermented alcohol because again, those properties in that alcohol have potentially, and again, those yeasts and, and uh, the way that that all works has potentially um, uh, taken care of some of those toxins that are, that are unsafe to drink. Um, there's a reference in this article about um, fermenting horse milk, which doesn't sound all that good, but I don't know. Maybe don't not to tell you try it. Okay. All right, just kind of moving along here. All right, and then making kind of the connection here at the end, where um, you know, I mean, especially in neo-Roman times, right? Like around Rome, before Rome, and then after Rome, you know, the idea that alcohol did become, for many, especially wine did become for like the elite class. It became um, for those that could afford it, for those that could develop it, those that could make it. It also, one of the section titles here in this Nat Geo article is we've always gone too far. <laughs> so um, I want to take a peek at that. Now, there's a really neat map here. Um, and again, please look at this article. It's great. Alcohol through the ages. Some 10 million years ago, a shared ancestor of humans and African apes evolved an enzyme that could rapidly digest alcohol in fermenting fruit. That set the biological state for the past 10,000 years in which people the world over have, been, have made alcoholic beverages by fermenting sugars and all sorts of fruits and even by finding ways to ferment starchy grains and roots. Okay? And so again, you can see here, and I'm not going to go through everything, but this might be the best... I don't know, this might be the best way of really unpacking the history of alcohol is looking at uh, this, this map um, and seeing kind of the transference and the trade. And you can see a lot happening up in Europe and in the Middle East and then kind of again across Asia. And you see similar things happening in Africa and in South America. And I mean, interestingly, like to consider here, I mean, especially in these like time frames of like, BCs, like 5400 BC, 6000 BC, 4000 BC, right? The idea here that in 7000 BC, BC, right? I'm just looking over here on the map. Pottery shreds indicated fermented cacao in Honduras. Uh, and that's 4000 BC over there. Well, also in 4000 BC, or kind of roughly around that time, I'm going to jump to nine. Uh, German beer, um, you know, was being discussed more and more, and like purity laws were going around. Or no, that was pardon me, that miss red here. Sorry, everybody. Um, basically, my question is, did humans and were humans again kind of evolving at the same rate across the globe? Because I don't know how much kind of like worldly travel there was in the BCs, right? Were people traveling from the Middle East in 7,500 BC to South America, 
um, to, to, you know, Honduras region, right? So again, just like other things to consider about this elaborate history. All right, so this video went on much longer than I actually expected, so I do apologize for that. Um, but I hope, sorry, but I do, and I do apologize for how long this video went on. But I hope that this article at least, again, kind of sets the stage for us to really think about and engage with, um, again, this long, long history of alcohol in, human, in humans. Okay? All right, so on Thursday, um, we're going to be in handling the hard stuff. So hopefully you've picked it up or will be able to pick it up soon. I'm about to send an email about when it should be in for the bookstore or to the bookstore. Um, and I'll just again kind of highlight, and I probably won't go as long or as, as in depth as I did here. And if you've made it this far, I applaud you. Thank you. Uh, and I hope that you do feel more enriched just kind of like looking at the complexities of the history of alcohol.